Hello, welcome to this week in Racing's Rolex 24 recap, where we cover the winners of all five classes, GTD, GTD Pro, LMP3, LMP2, and finally, the overall winners and in DPI. Let's get into it. Starting off with GTD, the Wright Motorsports number 16 Porsche took a victory after battling in the final hours with the 70 Inception McLaren and the number 44 Magnus Racing Aston Martin. Richard Leitz, Zach Robichon, Ryan Hardwick, and Yan Halen formed the four-driver lineup for the team, and it was their first win since 2020. The final finishing order for GTD was the right Porsche winning, the number 44 Aston Martin finishing second, and the Gilbert Korthoff Motorsports Mercedes AMG completing the podium. The number 70 Inception Racing McLaren would have a brake change with around 5 hours to go, dropping it out of contention and 6 laps down. After doubling up in WeatherTech and in Michelin Pilot Challenge last year, Wright Motorsports is back for the full season in IMSA WeatherTech, with Ryan Hardwick and Yan Halen forming the full season lineup, Zach Robichon joining in for the endurance races, and Richard Leese joining for the Rolex, which... In my account, that's a pretty successful lineup considering they won with a three-quarters new driving team. Magnus Racing also debuting their brand new Aston Martin after unsuccessfully running an Acura NSX last year with partnering with Archangel Motorsports. They finished second. Moving up the order to GTD Pro, FAF Motorsports took a last gasp win in a Final minutes battle with the KCMG Porsche being driven by Lawrence Vantor at the end. Mathieu Jaminet, Matt Campbell, and Felipe Nazar, a three-driver lineup, pretty rare for these days at the Rolex, took the win with Risi Competizioni finishing second in their Ferrari. And, the, and down to third went the number two KCMG Porsche. FAF is a GTD Pro team running for the full season with a full factory Porsche lineup. Expect to see them at every single round this year unless something goes wrong. On its debut race, GTD Pro did not disappoint. 13 car strong field, only about 6 finished the race, very entertaining, very competitive all the way up until the checkered flag. 24 hours, probably the most competitive class out of the five. Of course, we saw Ford make their announcement at the Rolex that they will be coming back in 2024. GTD Pro is showing great interest, and I see amazing opportunity coming soon for the class. Driver Matt Campbell said GTD Pro competition will be extremely tough this year. Rounding out the top five were the 14 Aim Vassar Sullivan Lexus and the 15 Proton USA Mercedes AMG, a one-off effort for only Daytona. Moving on to the bottom tier prototype class, the LMP3 category, nine cars entered the race. The class was almost evenly split between Ligier and Duquesne. Four Duquesne DO8s entered and nine Ligier JSP320s. Ligier would triumph, though, with the Riley Motorsports number 74 taking a dominant win and a Ligier 1 2 3 4. Following behind was the Sean Creech Motorsport number 33, the Core Autosport number 54, which was my pick to win at the beginning, and the Andretti Autosport number 36, which started the 24-hour race on the pole position. Riley has a full season effort planned along with Sean Creech and Core. LMP3 has the same schedule as LMP2, well, same amount of races, different races though. Six races, not counting the Rolex for LMP3, and six races, not counting the Rolex for LMP2, which we will head into in the next segment. The winning combination for the 74 car was made up of drivers Gar Robinson, Felipe Fraga, Kay Van Berlo, and Michael Cooper. Robinson and Fraga are expected for the full season, and it has not been specified that either Van Berlo or Cooper will fill in for the endurance roles. In the other two podium finishing cars, Malt Jakobsen, sorry if I butchered that name, in the Sean Creech Motorsport took the car to the finish, and Colin Brown took the 54 core all the way to the checkered flag. In LMP2, the IndyCar All-Star car took the victory at the end of the day with Devlin DeFrancesco, Padua Ward, Eric Lux, and Colton Herta driving. They finished 
ahead of the number 29 racing team Netherland Orica, which didn't finish last year, and the number 8 Tower Motorsport Orica, driven by Louis Delatraz, came home in third place. Dragon Speed will keep none of their lineup for the full season due to scheduling conflicts in IndyCar and Eric Lux doing other things. So, Henrik Hedman and Sebastian Montoya will be driving the 81 from Sebring forward. Looking forward to seeing what that pairing can do, especially with Montoya on the car. And his son, Sebastian, will, pair, will partner up with Hedman and Montoya for the Sebring 12-hour. LMP2 was a spec class in 2022. All 10 cars entered were Arica 07 Gibsons. But Rick Ware Racing is considering entering a... Ligier, like it did in the Rolex 24 last year, which will be interesting because I love the Le I love any non orica basically because watching all of the Oricas just becomes kind of bland, kind of like with Ligier and LMP3. But I love seeing the minority chassis doing well because the thing about IMSA versus Le Mans, the, the non oricas actually get fair BOP. The outright winners and in DPI. Elio Castroneves wins his second straight Rolex 24 and becomes, I believe, the first person to win two consecutive Indy 500s and two consecutive Rolex 24s. Well, he has to be the only person because he's the only one who's won two consecutive 500s. Elio shared the car with Simon Pagano, Tom Blomquist, and Oliver Jarvis for the full race. Tom Blomquist and Oliver Jarvis will be in the car for the full season. Elio will join for the endurance races, and Pagano was Rolex only. But it was an Acura 1-2 as Wayne Taylor Racing took second three seconds behind after they had to weave through the spinning KCMG number no. 2 Porsche at the end of the GTD Pro battle. The number 31 Action Express Wheelan Engineering Cadillac finished third, and the Mustang Sampling JDC Miller Cadillac finished fourth. The two Chip Ganassi cars and the 48 Action Express Cadillac all finished many, many laps down, even though all seven DPIs did finish the race. DPI will have six full-time entries like it did last year, with the 02 Cadillac filling the gap left by the Mazda program ending. The number 48 Action Express Cadillac will be driven by Kamui Kobayashi, Jimmy Johnson, and Mike Rockenfeller for the, for the endurance races. This comes off a great year for Meyer Shank Racing, also winning last year's Indy 500 with Elio Castroneves. That's this week in racing's 2022 Rolex 24 roundup. Stay tuned for daily updates and new videos every Saturday. On the next show, Volkswagen and Porsche and Audi to Formula One. We'll dive into the 2026 regulations and why they fit the VAG perfectly. And is Audi on DH still a thing? Find out next week.